Now for this next part, D, it's quite tricky. What we've got is that at time t equals 6 seconds, the force f is removed and the system decelerates to rest. The resistances to motion are unchanged and what we've got to do is find the distance moved by p as the system decelerates for 4 marks. Well first of all, let's just draw a sketch of those particles, p and q. Now we know that when t equals 6, in an earlier part of the question we found that the particles were moving with a speed of 7.5 meters per second. So we know that when t equals 6, both particles, because they're joined together, are moving at 7.5 meters per second. So we'll just pop that in there, 7.5 meters per second. And f is removed and the particles are now going to slow down and come to rest. Okay, let's say they come to rest there. So we've got to find out the distance moved by P. So we'll just put that distance in. P goes from here, say, to this point down here. A total displacement of S meters. Well, how are we going to get what S is? Well, it sounds like this is a kind of SUVAT-based equation that we've got to use. If we were doing SUVAT, okay, let's just take a positive sense, and that will be in the direction of motion. We'll take the positive sense then out to the right. So if we're doing SUVAT, S for displacement, we want that u the initial velocity, v the final velocity, a the acceleration, t the time. What do we actually know? Well certainly s we want to find. u, we know that, u is 7.5. The final velocity, we know that, it's going to be 0. But we don't know the acceleration. We knew the acceleration in the previous part when f was there, it was 1.25, but f has been removed, so we don't know that acceleration. And we don't know the time that it takes to go from 7.5 to 0 meters per second. So what we're going to need to do is work out what the acceleration is. And that means that we're going to need to consider the forces. So let's just mark on forces now on these particles. Now we know that for Q, F has been removed, but we're told that the resistances to motion are unchanged. So there's going to be the resistance on Q of 2 newtons. Just mark that one in as 2 newtons. Also, there'll be on Q the weight, that acts downwards. Mass was 0 0.5, so it's still going to be 0 0.5 gmg newtons. There'll be a reaction as well coming up from there, so I'll just mark that in. Call that RQ then, RQ newtons. But when this is slowing down, the tension here is going to change. Instead of Q pulling P, there's now going to be a thrust in the bar connecting the particles. Now by a thrust that means that the forces change turn direction. So there's going to be a thrust pushing in to Q like so. I'm going to call that T dash Newtons. Now this particle Q and P are going to experience exactly the same acceleration because they're connected by this rod. So there's going to be an acceleration that's going to act in that direction. We'll call it A meters per second per second. Not the same A though, as I said, that we have up here. But the problem is, if we start to resolve on Q, we're going to involve this force T dash Newtons, the thrust acting on Q. And we don't know that. So it's going to be a bit of a problem. So let's turn to P and see what forces we've got acting on P. Well on P we've got the resistance to motion. 
we know that's the same as before. It was 1 Newton, so we'll just mark that in as 1 Newton. We've got the thrust though. The thrust must act equal and opposite on P. So that's going to act in the direction to the left, pushing back on P, and that's going to be T dash Newtons. We've got the weight acting on P, which is going to be 0.3 G Newtons, because the mass is 0.3 kilograms. And there'll be a reaction up here, which we'll call RP, RP Newtons. So again, we've got T dash acting on P, a bit of a problem if we're trying to find the acceleration. But if we consider the whole system, P and Q, moving with this acceleration, then the T dash values will cancel out. So that's the way that I'm going to go. I'm going to consider both P and Q together and resolve in a horizontal direction, taking positive to the right. So when we do that, we've got the total force to the right. Well, that's going to be minus 1, minus 2 here, a total of minus 3. As for the T dash values, we're going to have minus T dash here, plus T dash there. They're going to cancel one another out. And then this overall force equals the mass, which is a total of 0.8 kilograms, the 0.3 and the 0.5. And it's accelerating with an acceleration a. Now A is in the positive sense of this arrow, so we just mark A in. And we can get A by dividing minus 3 by 0 0.8. And if you do that, you end up with minus 3.75. And we would expect that, a negative value, because we are slowing down the particles are slowing down, so we'd expect a negative acceleration. The deceleration would be 3.75 meters per second per second. So we need to put this over here as minus 3.75. Okay, now we can apply a SUVAT-based equation to these variables here, one that leaves out t. And the one that that is, is v squared equals u squared plus 2as. So that means that if we were to rearrange this, subtract u squared from both sides, that would be v squared minus u squared equals 2as, then divide both sides by 2a, that s would be equal to v squared minus u squared all over 2a. And all we need to do now is just fill in our values. So for v, we know that v was 0, so we can say that we've got 0 squared, which is 0, minus whatever u is when you square it. Well, that's going to be 7.5 squared. And then we're dividing all of this by 2 times the acceleration, which is minus 3.75. So what happens now is you actually end up with a positive value because these two minuses here are going to give us a positive value. Work this out on your calculator and you find that you get S turns out to be 7.5. 7.5 meters then. So you've got to take extra care with this problem, especially over these minus signs that we get here. Okay, so I hope that's given you an idea on that part.